The latest amendments to AS 1210, the Australian Pressure Vessel Standard, introduce non-linear finite element analysis as a third acceptable method of establishing the structural integrity of a pressure vessel design, the pre-existing methods being a the original design by rules and b linear finite elements combined with stress categories. The linear FEA stress categories method was used as the basis for establishing the desirable strength outcomes from the application of non-linear FEA. Considering a simple cylinder with a flat end to illustrate the linear FEA stress category approach, the more common acceptable pressure vessel materials have a design strength F equal to two thirds of the yield strength. The primary general membrane stress in the cylinder, remote from the discontinuities, is limited to two-thirds yield at design pressure. That is, we should be able to apply 1.5 times the design pressure without causing any significant yielding to the cylinder. The primary bending stress in the flat end is limited to the yield strength, and accordingly at design pressure its maximum bending stress doesn't exceed the yield strength. At the junction, the cylinder is restrained from radially expanding, so generating a local bending stress not directly related to the pressure loading. The combination of this secondary stress with a primary stress is limited to twice yield. Remember that the analysis is linear and so there is no actual yielding in the analysis. Superimposed on the primary plus secondary stress on the inner corner of the junction is a peak stress resulting from the stress concentration. This is only of concern with respect to its potential to start a fatigue crack and is assessed using the SN curves in the standard. Remember, stresses are generally multi-axial in pressure vessels, so when we refer to stress at a particular point, we actually mean the uniaxial equivalent stress, i.e. von Mises or Tresca stress intensity. The primary plus secondary limit of twice yield warrants consideration with respect to the underlying strength target. While the stress at the discontinuity in the linear analysis can reach twice yield, the actual material will of course yield on first loading. However, when unloaded and the two shell components regain their original shape, the joint will be forced back to close to its original geometry. So when unloaded after first loading, this region will have inbuilt residual stress that can be as much as negative yield. Subsequent load cycles will fluctuate in stress within the range minus yield to plus yield, that is elastically through the range of up to twice yield. This process is called shakedown. The strength objective is clear, that is after shakedown, stress in the discontinuity region as a result of the design pressure should cycle elastically within a range of up to twice yield. In summary, the linear FEA stress category approach requires all categories of stress to be elastic at the design loading. That is, the application of the design load after shakedown should not result in stresses that are outside the plus yield to minus yield elastic stress range. There are two qualifications. Primary general membrane stresses are limited to two-thirds yield and Peak stresses, while they may and often do exceed the yield strength, are limited in their number of cycles to comply with the relevant fatigue curve. The linear FEA stress category approach has limitations and difficulties in its application. Many have difficulty in understanding the concept of secondary stress, that it can be genuinely difficult to differentiate secondary from primary in some geometries. For example, bending in the cylinder at the junction with a flat end, as discussed earlier, has had its classification and standards fluctuate between primary and secondary over time. By definition, linear FEA cannot confirm shakedown to elastic action and thus cannot confirm or otherwise whether the classification of a particular component stress as secondary was the correct classification. The hydrostatic test, currently set at 1.43 times the design pressure in AS 1210, can cause very significant plastic deformation. For example, given a primary bending stress that is at the allowable maximum, the yield strength at the design pressure, Clearly, a 1.43 hydro will cause significant, perhaps excessive, permanent deformation. 
The permanent strain levels resulting from the hydro are not addressed in the linear FEA stress category approach. Indeed, the hydro is not included in any way in the analysis. The hydrostatic pressure test, as a result of exceeding the yield strength, particularly in those areas of discontinuity, results in a. a favourable distribution of residual stress, b. improvements in shape, for example, knuckle radii can be subtly increased, improving their fatigue performance. And C, an increase in the yield strength due to strain hardening, a key objective in cold stretch stainless steel vessels. The linear FE approach, which doesn't analyse the hydro, cannot quantify or include any of these beneficial effects of the hydro. The nonlinear FEA method in AS1210 starts with an analysis of the hydro. The model will have its self-weight, the weight of the water, the true stress-strain properties of the materials and be set to analyse, including both material and geometric nonlinearity. The hydro is not limited by test pressure but by the resulting strain, the limits being 1% remote from discontinuities and 5% at discontinuities, excluding peak stresses excepting for cold stretch stainless steel vessel where the limits are 5.2% and 25%. Overarching these strain limits is a requirement that the strains not exceed one third of the material's failure elongation. This example is of a cold stretch stainless steel transportable vessel after unloading from the hydro showing permanent strain of about 2% remote from discontinuities and less than 10% at the discontinuities excluding peaks. Starting with the model in its condition after the hydro test that is unloaded and empty but having the distributions of residual stress, strain hardening and deformation resulting from the hydro, the vessel is then reloaded to the service load with a nonlinear analysis. In conformity with a linear stress category approach, this should produce no plastic deformation, that is, excepting peak stresses, the deformation should be elastic. If blue is zero plastic strain, the contour plot should be all blue excepting for peak stresses at, for example, stress concentrations. Note that your software must be able to plot plastic strain over this increment, that is from zero load after the hydro to the service load. To demonstrate that the linear stress category safety margin of 1.5 on membrane stresses remote from discontinuities is satisfied, increase the loading to 1.5 times the service load. This further loading should produce no plastic membrane strain remote from the discontinuities. This analysis to the service load and then to 1.5 times the service load needs to be repeated for all load combinations to demonstrate that the elastic strain requirements are complied with for all load combinations. For the fatigue analysis, return to the model in its unloaded state after the hydro and apply the service load using linear, not nonlinear analysis. Amendment 2 will give guidance for both static and fatigue loadings for transportable vessels. In this case, the fatigue loading requirement will be 1.4 g axial plus 3 g vertical plus 1.4 g lateral, applied concurrently with a required life of 10,000 cycles. In this example, the most severe peak stress was at the intersection of two square hollow section steel members as indicated. Having identified the critical zones, a more detailed model of each specific locality can be undertaken to determine the geometric stress associated with the peak in question. Modelling the imponderable varying root radius of weld toes can be avoided in the fatigue analysis by using the geometric stress in combination with a welded curve in ES1210. From a detailed model, the von Mises stress between approximately 0.4 and 1.8 plate thicknesses is extrapolated back to the singularity to give the geometric stress. This geometric stress, 683 megapascals in this example, can then be taken to the welded fatigue curve in ES1210 to determine the permissible number of cycles, being about 4,000 in this case. In summary, Carry out a nonlinear analysis of the hydro, loading then unloading. 
Ensure that the strains at the Hydra test pressure do not exceed 1% remote from discontinuities and 5% at discontinuities, excluding peaks. And for cold stretch stainless steel vessels, 5.2% and 25%. Starting from the unloaded Hydra tested vessel, apply the service load and check that this loading caused no plastic deformation, excepting at peak stress locations. Then increase the service loading by 50% and check that there is no plastic deformation remote from the discontinuities. Repeat the service loading procedure for all service load cases. For fatigue loading, start with the unloaded after hydro model and carry out linear analysis, not non-linear, for the service load cycles and determine the permissible number of cycles from the fatigue curves in AS1210. Thank you for your attention.